YouTube, what's going on? Joe's Neon here. Wanted to shoot a little vid for you guys. Bucket shot a couple years ago. That was a good one. I want to show you guys uh, some of my implements I use when I'm out in the woods. <clears throat> a little story about each one of them. Uh, wearing my war shirt, spot skin, made it myself. Hell yeah. Uh, but anyhow, I, uh, I had a friend of mine drop me off an old anchor. He was cleaning out a barn and um, he found an old hatchet. He said he dropped it off at the house. He said, you know, I don't know if you want it or not, but it's pretty old. It's rusty. It's nasty. Um, but I took it and I gave it some love, gave it a little, gave it a little clean up. And this is what it looks like. This is an old Stanley and I make the sheaths myself for all of these, except for my grand floors. This is an old Stanley with a hickory handle. It's a real sweetheart. I'll show you what it looks like after it's been all cleaned up. That's it. It's a real nice little tool. Real nice. I enjoy it a lot. It, uh, I've, I've used it. It works fine. Works great. Very nice. Uh, once they're cleaned up and conditioned, boy, it makes a big difference. This one here... Um, <clears throat> this one here has a lot of uh, a lot of history the other day I was working at my mom's house and we're getting ready to sell her house and she's gonna move and we're cleaning things out and I found the hatchet that I grew up with camping as a kid um, I can remember this hatchet from when I was not allowed to touch it. And then I was probably four or five years old. Um, but I always was fascinated by it. My dad always brought it with us camping. Um, but I asked my mom, I said, Mom, I said, uh, how old do you think this thing is? And she said, well... She says, your father might have bought that when he was surveying before you were born. So this could be, uh, this could be upwards of, I don't know, 50 years old. It's a plum, plum hatchet, and it was just orange with rust. The handle was totally dried out and white, just nasty. So, did a little work on it. And uh, I got it looking nice. And it's beautiful. This I'll never use. This will never be used again. Uh, I made a sheath for it. Just finished that up a little while ago, as a matter of fact. But you'll see that logo there on all of them. It's not a logo. That's my brand. JMY, my initials. But came out real nice, real happy with it. Um, starting to find a fascination in restoring these uh, these old axes and hatchets thanks to a lot of folks on YouTube um, as a kid my Norland Hudson Bay this was my trapping hatchet this was carried in my pack basket still is when I'm trapping uh, it's a, it's a fine, fine tool, very nice hatchet, uh, good steel, good handle on it. I'm not sure if the handle is, is hickory or ash, but, um, I did a leather wrap on it. It's pretty cool. It's held up real well, and I really like this one a lot. This got uh, put to use two weekends ago. 
and never lets me down. Split a lot of wood with it. Yeah. And that's kind of a real traditional type sheath. Um, just a hand stitch folded over. But works great. I uh, got some uh, some tomahawks. I got a trail hawk. I figured I'd pick one up. See what I thought about that. Reasonable enough. Made in Taiwan. I'm pretty surprised. Um, at 11 paces, it throws real well. You'll stick it every time. Again, I made the sheath for it. It's got an alright handle on it. It's got some heartwood, but I've heard pros and cons on the heartwood. I did a lot of work on the blade. The blade wasn't really uh, up to snuff out of the box by, by any means. But now it's razor sharp. I can shave with that. And it throws good. It's a good, good tomahawk. Custom made sheath. Real nice. And I got another one, uh, Canadian Blackhawk. This is good. Uh, the head is heavy on this. It's a good, good hatchet though. Thrown tomahawk. Works real well. And again, this comes with no edge at all. It's round. I had to completely work the edge on that. But, like everything I own, it's razor, razor sharp. And it's a good thrower. It's a nice tomahawk. Um, it's a little head heavy. I think I'm going to make a different handle for it so that it, it, it balances better in the, in the throw. But it's, it's, uh, it's a nice tomahawk. I like it a lot. I put a lot of work into it, as you can see, but it's well worth it. It's a nice piece, nice tool. And of course, my Grand Spores. This is just uh, an incredible tool. I really enjoyed using this. Uh, Last weekend, if you guys haven't watched my video on Little Tupper Lake, um, I put this to work. It was really nice. Really neat. Did a lot of work with it. And when I got home, all I had to do was just touch it up a little bit. And boy, I'm back to razor sharp. Yeah. Real nice. So, really loving that. Um... Yeah, so you, if you watch the video um, from Little Tupper Lake, you also s heard me talk about um, the custom-made Dan Rodkey knife that I acquired. And I'll tell you, it's a real beauty, and I want to show it to you. Get on my case here. Here it is. the knife. Now I'm going to get a little closer so I can show you a little better. It's got a Skinner blade on it. The back is, the spine like I said is all hand filed. Sterling silver on the bolsters. Desert ironwood for the pommels of the grip. But look at the way the tang is tapered. Can you see that? That's really neat. But it says rod key on the blade. And it's just uh it's an incredible, incredible knife. Really cool. In mint condition, nonetheless. But it just fits right in there. The sheath is so well made. Everything about it is just beautiful. Really nice. So I'll put the back in the cabinet. 
But anyhow, I just want to do a short vid on some of my uh, collectibles and my chopping tools. I'll give you a little look at my knives. This one here, I hand beaded myself. I do um, a lot of hand beading. That hand beading on that little saw blade knife there is mine. And I did this hand beading which is many, many, many tiny seed beads. That's about 120 hours worth of beading. Three at a time. So, it's kind of fun. Pretty interesting. That's a weird looking buck I shot a couple years back. We called him the devil deer. Last day of the season, he's just got those two long spikes. That this here on the bottom is a, a Fisher skull, kind of neat. Some of my other sheath knives, um, and more, and more, and that's what I enjoy. But anyhow, like I said, just want to do a short vid. I'll show you a uh, quiver for my arrows that I made. This is out of buckskin. This is uh, really nice. It's got a collar of sheepskin in it to keep the arrows quiet. It's all buckskin except for the interior tube I did out of um, a top grain bull hide, which is very heavy. Makes for a real nice real nice uh, quiver I gotta put a strap on it yet haven't quite figured out how I want to do it but um, works great I do my own arrow cresting all my arrows are crested to different colors that I want to do them in and it's it's a uh, Ted Nugent arrow which is cool that works out pretty good and um, but yeah like I said you know just want to check in, touch base. I really appreciate everybody watching my vids. It's great, you know. You guys subscribe. And please leave me a comment. I'll get back to you. I I love it. There's no doubt. You leave me a comment, you'll hear back from me. For sure. Uh, I do some, uh, I make some instruments too. This here is um, Native American Indian flute that I made out of uh, white pine. Sounds pretty nice. You really get that sound. Pretty cool. So anyhow, thanks for watching. And uh, got some stuff coming up here in the future. Again, I said I'm going to have some hunting vids and all that good stuff. But hey, you guys are the best. Keep watching, subscribe, and leave me some comments. Talk to you soon.